This is a set of front and rear Shimano MT200 hydraulic disc brakes. $27.29, that's 59% off. That's bike apocalypse pricing. Now, sometimes you'll load the page and the price will be different. They play all sorts of games on AliExpress, not the most ethical place to get anything, but if you have a Dick Sporting Goods mountain bike like that GT we saw in the last video, these would be an amazing upgrade for it and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't tell you about deals like these. This is one of the biggest upgrades you can give an entry-level bike with mechanical disc brakes. You can pull the brake lever with your pinky and it'll bring the bike to a dead stop. Not only are these cheap, they're arguably the most reliable hydraulic disc brakes you can possibly get. I have them on the Timberjack, I've put them on all sorts of different bikes and I've put baby oil in similar brakes and they're working to this day. Really good, uh, it's not gonna last long. Next product, the Can Claw. This is a neat little water bottle cage that holds cans. I presume most people are putting beer cans in these for their social bike rides, but it holds a LaCroix can just fine and they have a version for a 16 ounce can. Now this was designed and built by a self-described pretengineer, but it is one of the best 3D printed parts I've ever seen. Really clean, it's made of fiberglass infused nylon, very strong, but can it actually hold a can on a bicycle? So I'm dressed exactly as somebody who carries cans in their bicycles would be, and as you can see, I have installed the can claw upside down. The reason I did that is the release is right here, and I'm afraid that in this configuration, the weight is actually gonna release it. Wanna give it a fighting chance on this fork. That is a brutal place to mount a water bottle or a can. Let's take it down some trails and see how well it can hold a can. So that should tell us everything we need to know about the can claw. It can hold a can on your bike for sure. And if you're holding a can on your bike, you're probably riding a single speed or a gravel bike. So your terrain probably wouldn't even be as demanding as that. Now, one thing I like about the can claw, there are no straps, thanks in part to the unique shape of a can that has little lips on it. But I must say, I haven't seen many 3D printed parts that perform this well, especially in chilly weather like we have today. So the can claw, it sure does hold cans for pretengineers. These guys did a pretty good job. This is $24. That sounds kind of steep for a little piece of plastic, but these are low production runs and designed for something very specific. And so honestly, I think it's a fair price. It's only a dollar more for the 16 ounce version. If you gotta hold cans on your bike, uh, I don't know what else would do a better job than this. This is a board game created by a six-year-old mountain biker. His parents provided the initial seed capital. He started this business making board games. Now he's got a website and everything, full-fledged entrepreneur. Let's see if this board game's any good. So this is a mountain biker's take on the classic game, Snakes and Ladders. So I have an admission to make. I don't know how to play Snakes and Ladders. I actually hate board games. <laughs> when I'm with a bunch of friends and they pull out a board game, I'm just like, see you later. I'm gonna go home and just sit around and look at the wall or sleep or something. I know I'm a bummer, but that's just the way I am. But the quality of this is very good. Artwork is really nice, nice and colorful. I think a kid that enjoys mountain biking would really like this. And of course you can't always mountain bike. Sometimes your bike's broken, the weather's bad, it's nighttime. And so this is kind of a cool gift for somebody who likes mountain biking. Let's see, how do you play snakes and ladders? Okay, let's try this. Okay, so the main strategy with this game is to roll the dice onto the number that's gonna get you to a ladder. If you land on one of these red up arrows, that's a lift. And if you land on one of these blue down arrows, you take the trail down. 
Now, I am unable to roll the dice and make it land exactly where I want, and so I don't think I'd be very good at this game. But you know what? This is going at the Burn Peak Ranger Station, my mountain biker Airbnb, because it might be raining out and some people like board games. These are the A-Vision Guardian knee pads. Now you take the knee pads on and off with Fidlock V-buckles, and so they're magnetic. Then you pull this little guy over here, and they come off. So you're not sliding them up and down your leg. You can have your shoes on when you're taking them on and off. But there are also several straps that get them to conform to your calf. And once you've made that adjustment, you never have to touch it again. They'll just come on and off really easily with these straps and those custom adjustments that you made to make them fit your leg stay in place. And there are pads all over them, on the side, on the front. It's pretty impressive, really. I gotta say, on bare legs, they are not the most comfortable knee pads I've ever worn. There's lots of straps here. There's a tag in here that I can feel on my thigh. And they conform to your calves so well that when you extend your leg, Leg, they kind of come off your knee and then go back on. I'm not crazy about that, but they really stay in place. And so if I'm trying to protect my knee, I think it's a good trade off. I think other companies spend so much time trying to make the knee pad just feel like it's not even there that it ends up just sliding everywhere. And as soon as that sticky stuff wears out, you gotta get new knee pads. Now these are quite premium and they are priced as such. $130 for knee pads. I've seen protective gear that's a lot more expensive. I've seen a lot that's less. But it looks like you can keep these for a long time. They are easy to clean. You can take out the honeycombs from right here, and then you can put the entire knee pad in the washing machine. The build quality is very good, and like I said, they're the easiest knee pads to get on and off with all your adjustments intact. And if you actually want something that's gonna protect your knees, something that's gonna stay in place where you want it to be, I just haven't tried many knee pads that are as effective as these. These are really starting to grow on me. They stay in place really well, and they're easy to take on and off. I think I'm gonna use them and see if they end up being a long-term choice. A-Vision Guardian knee pads. Compact wireless bike pumps. This is a growing category, and people are sending them to me all the time. If you remember, I reviewed this one and I criticized it for having kind of short battery life, but actually, having seen a lot of them, this is not a bad bike pump. It's quick, it's easy. It actually makes sense to throw in your pack or leave in your glove box, and it does the job. This one is more capable in every way. It's bigger, more powerful, it has more battery life, it's got a big screen on it. You can check the air pressure, but I don't think as much thought was actually put into this as this one. It's made by an automotive company, Fantic. They make a lot of automotive accessories, and it seems like they wanted to get into the bike market, and they didn't really look into what cyclists would want. And so I'll tell you what I like about this pump, and I'll tell you what I don't like about it. First of all, I do like the battery life, and I do like the build quality. It has a little hose, the hose screws in here, you turn it on. So they have a bunch of presets here now. E-bike is set to 20 PSI. Mountain is set to 60 PSI, which would blow the tire right off the rim. And then you can manually set your pressure if you press it again. And that is what I suspect almost every single cyclist who's spending $70 on a wireless bike pump would do. If instead of trying to guess what people actually pump their bike tires up to, they just made preset one, two, three, and four and let you decide what they were, it would actually be really convenient. Oh, preset one is my front tire, preset two is my rear tire, and I always set them to the same pressure. Now again, I must reiterate, this is a $70 wireless bike pump. Who's gonna be buying it? Well, people who take their bikes pretty seriously. And the default setting on this is Schrader. This little bike pump, the one that I criticized, it's Presta by default. You just pop this on the bike and make it go. This one, you have to screw something on, then your valve core comes out. It just seems like they took the hose from an automotive pump, tried to guess what PSI people actually use in their mountain bikes, and then added a 30 cent part to make it a bike pump, 
and charge $70 for it. So yeah, I get it. If you're pumping up soccer balls in the garage or you, you have some bikes you want to inflate, maybe this is a good product. Like I said, the build quality is good. It's got USB-C charging and the battery life is pretty nice. But to market it as a bicycle product and then send it to the mountain bike YouTuber that has the most subscribers, probably good to do a little bit more research before you do that because like I said, it's not perfect. And I think there are better products you can get if you're looking for a compact pump actually designed for bicycles. So this is something interesting that was sent to me. Dear Mr. Bike Hacks, I hope our gift reaches you well. We are Steel Silhouettes and wanted to send you a gift to show appreciation for all the enjoyment you've given us over the years. This is actually a steel replica of this bike back over here. It has sort of the same geometry. You can even see the axis dropper post. You can see how the seat clamp goes out the back. They even got the shape of the cranks right. They really did a good job here and they'll actually make one for your bike and they make it really intuitive. If you go to their website, you actually click find your bike and if it's a normal bike that people can just buy at a shop, they probably have it in there. I'm not really big into decorations and trinkets and stuff like that, but I think this is pretty cool. And the fact that they make it so easy makes it a great gift to get for someone. Now they have little trinket sized ones, they have medium sized ones, and then these big ones are $200. I'm probably gonna put this up in my Airbnb and I'm probably gonna put this on my desk. And so I do admire them. I think they're cool, a little pricey, but there are gonna be some people who want them because they're so unique. Now I do get a lot of stuff, more than I can feature. This one's kind of near and dear to me. Clavicle Club, lifetime member. They include a nice little note. Thank you for your show. My son came up with the idea for this mug when he became a member. He thought you'd enjoy one. So they must watch the channel because they know that I'm a lifetime member of the Clavicle Club and these are available on Etsy. I know I didn't really get this video out in time for the holidays, but that's okay. It's mostly for entertainment anyway. And plus, I enjoy checking out all sorts of weird little products that you don't normally see on the other channels. Hope you learned something today. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.